It's the Opix Podcast, baby. Glad you tuned in. Got your host, thank me later, and you're stupid to win. Might become an obsession as soon as you begin. Start out king of the street, then lock it iconic in. Welcome to Offland. Grab your Opix, man. On your way in the door, hit you with four grand. Get to buying and gripping, then to selling and flipping. Over to moving and shocking. I'm Scrooge McDuckin' in Opix. Welcome, fellow Uplanders, to... I don't know if we call this a podcast. This is more of an informative video, but to the Upland Property Experts podcast, I'm your host, Too Stupid to Win, and as always, I'm joined by Thank Me Later. Hello. Yeah. yeah wait, are we doing this as, a, like, will it be, like, podcast listeners can listen to this, too? Uh, only if they come to YouTube and check it out. Okay, so this is a YouTube, YouTube exclusive. Can we say that? Uh, maybe because we can also i don't know i haven't decided if we're going to put this on the podcast or not it, it, oh okay <laughs> possible youtube exclusive but right. if it's not we still love you loyal podcast listeners that don't watch youtube absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay we definitely we've definitely now confused and alienated both of our five audience members so we're good to go <laughs> We got way more than five audience members. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is uh, something that we've talked about doing is creating shorter videos that focus just on one subject area. And today we wanted to talk about the Fair Start Act and what it means. AKA in FSA. Yeah, AKA FSA. Who calls it the Fair Start Act? Nobody. Nobody. That's like, uh, oh, well, no, we're not going to get political. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I, I almost went there, but no. Okay. So yeah. Fair Start Act, FSA. Yeah. And we figured now we have, this was recorded on February 27, 2022. And we will update this as it changes. And it's very important on these style of videos. So you know when to reference uh, when this was recorded, because if something changes and the Fair Start Act FSA has changed a couple of times since its inception. Um, and why, what is FSA? And it was designed to get new players started in the metaverse. And the FSA is a resort for newer players and generate less expensive, generally less than expensive than non FSA properties um and really what kind of drove that is a lot of the og players in san francisco and manhattan were buying up the floor and just gobbling it up some of it was induced by upland because they had these minting challenges to get you into the bubbles of manhattan as they were releasing that city so everybody was just buying up the floor so they could have the most properties so they'd be in the top 10 so they could go to manhattan and be able to mint first in the area. And then that caused the problem. Right. No, I think this is FSA was not a roadmap item ever for Upland. As far as I know, I don't know if they've like had it in their back pocket, but as far as, as far as I'm aware, it kind of grew out of just the market response, which I feel like it's easy in hindsight to go, well, of course the people are going to just buy the cheapest properties first. That's not how it was in San Francisco. You got to keep in mind, like people weren't doing that in San Francisco. Like they were buying properties that they wanted. They were buying properties like around their friends. They were like the, the mentality wasn't like, let's just buy a bunch of cheap properties. That never happened. But you're exactly right. That that buying mentality when they were like, hey, buy, you know, fast sellout, stuff like that, like um, started to, to really reduce what inventory was available for new players. So. Yeah, FSA. there were a lot of, a lot of collections still available and affordable in San Francisco, so you could go by there. You That's know, true. you could, you could work your way through with five properties, get some bonuses, buy more property. There was a lot to do in San Francisco. Um, it was then when players were really starting to put thousands of dollars into the game, and they were getting their. Uh, return on investment from their property earnings and they were just buying the floor and turning around and marking those up just a little bit to hopefully sell that sooner or later. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly what happened. So I, I personally, I like the concept of FSA um, and the initial, and like, I think it's a living uh, like, like too stupid said at the beginning, like 
hey, this is this is now. This is February, the end of February 2022. This is the current state of FSA. When it first launched, there was different rules. There was different way it, it was interacting. So we'll, we'll talk about, maybe we'll talk about a little bit of the history of it as well. But um, Yeah. And how do you know if you're eligible for FSA? If your net worth is under 100,000 UPEX, which is 1,000 UPEX equals $1. So if you have less than $100 of value in the game of Upland, you're eligible to buy FSA properties. And what does it look like on the map for you? You know, anything that's marked with these FSA on the property, you can see some um, in the light gray. That means those properties are available for purchase. The blue properties that have FSA, somebody already purchased, and the dark green ones are up for sale. Uh, we will have a, pro a video coming up breaking down the uh, properties. You know, there's a lot of good videos out there, but we'll give you our, our insights on that too, of breaking down a property and the property colors for you. But this is what FSA looks like, how you identify it on the map. And if you have a net worth less than 100,000 UPEX, you are able to purchase those properties. Now, you can sell those properties, but you're only allowed to sell two per week. Yeah, so this is this is one of those big changes that has come to FSA. Not recently, actually. It's it's been around for a while now. But when when FSA was first announced, it was you know the same restrictions: hundred k um, net value or less uh, would make you eligible for FSA. Uh, however, you could sell an unlimited amount, um, and this caused a very interesting dynamic where players would actively try to stay under that and you would have pros not necessarily I don't like the word exploit because I don't think that that's fair um but they would you know go into like a, a cycle where it's like okay you just keep buying and feeding them to me and then like I'll give you a bunch of money later and that's and like no one in my opinion no one really got ripped off like you could find players that were just more generous than others but at the end of the day, everybody was make like the the FSA players were still making a ton of profit. You could easily go from you know a brand new player to a hundred thousand upex like in an afternoon, very easily. Um, but it, again, it created a weird dynamic that the FSAs were still selling through too fast. It really wasn't achieving the outcome. So um, no. Upland, it, it, yeah. Oh, it, it was more of a it was more of a funneling process than really a fair start act. It was just like, hey, I need an FS person, an FSA person, and it, it was just churning you through and spitting you out and on to the next one. And you're just like, you didn't learn how to play the game. You really didn't amass anything. And it was just some people felt used and abused, and other people were happy with their experience. And you had players that would take advantage, but that was few and far between other than and it developed a lot of good friendships. Too. Oh, for sure. Because it it was a much different interaction again, because you were like buddies. Like you were like, you're my dude, like we're gonna go buy a bunch of stuff. Like, I mean, I used them aggressively. I mean, there was like and again, there's a healthy way to do that from a like a teaming perspective. It wasn't healthy at all for the economy, in my opinion, because again, I don't think it achieved the outcome because they, they were just we were just churning through them. But yeah, players who were genuine about it would pair up with newer players. It really got that camaraderie, and it's it was an interesting time in Upland for sure. Yeah. Now, so you're new, you have your FSA eligibility. In my eyes, you know, this game is, it, it's few and far between the players that can come in, put $5 in, become an uplander, and end up being a very successful player. Few and far between. Very, like that is the exception, not the rule. So sure. this is not a game, this is not a freemium game. This game. Not, not at this point. Right. To be fair, not at this point, really, it's not, but it yeah. could, be, but not right now. Good point. So my personal opinion and not a financial advice is if you want to play Upland, you want to take max advantage of FSA, go ahead and just buy the game. You spend money, you know, if you play the PlayStation or the Xbox, you know, you spent money on a game. You spend money, you know, even on the mobile game, some people spend money to buy different kits or different accessories or whatever the case may be. Stop being cheap. Stop being cheap. Go ahead and buy the game. But what amount to put in? First, 
only put in what you can afford. Once again, not what financial I mean. advice. But if you have a referral code, you probably only want to put in $60 max. Yeah, I don't know if there's a $60 option. <laughs> you, you can do a 50 and then a $10. But you only oh, but it's them. first. You're right. You're right. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, no, Man. no. It's, it's, it's a fair thought. Ideally, 60. And the reason being 60 would maximize the 50% bonus, which would get you to 90 plus your initial seed should keep you under 100. Um, however, I, I think 50 is the right, right amount. And 50 lines up with what video games used to cost. I know they're obscene now. But like, I, I like that comparison, honestly, of like, hey, starting the game, you can play and essentially like, honestly, it is kind of like demo mode. You can buy a couple of properties. Maybe you get it, you know, with the community. Um, but if you like it, put that $50, right? Put that $50, you'll get set if you've used the referral code. Um, and if you need one, there's one somewhere hopefully yes, in, in the link in the link in the link <laughs> in the links um, in the description there's a link <laughs> but that will get you a 50 percent bonus on your first upex purchase that'll turn your 50 dollars into seventy five thousand upex which is a great starting amount honestly um for well i mean at the time of this we are preparing for detroit which is a tier three 70 percent fsa city so that is a fantastic opportunity. There's also still plenty of FSA that is available at the time of this recording in LA, um, probably Kansas City, Nashville still has some. So there's there's still places that that FSA is, is super valuable. Um, and I would imagine that will stay the case for the life of the game. That's kind of the idea. And tier two, you know, we'll break down the tiers of the cities in another video, but you know, your tier two cities have 50% FSA, your tier three has 70% or greater. And in these cities, the, the properties FSA in a tier three is definitely cheaper than an FSA in a tier one. So you'll be able to buy more FSAs in your tier three cities, which will help increase your virtual property portfolio. Ooh, virtual property portfolio. That sounds fancy. It does sound fancy. Your VPP or your VP2. VP. <laughs> no PP. We'll, we'll work on that. We'll work on some. We'll work on that, but virtual property portfolio. <laughs> virtual property portfolio. I like it. Now, if you're already into Upland and you don't have a referral code, but you're like, all right, I'm going to buy the game, um, you want to put in to keep you under that hundred thousand. So if you just have the 4,000 that you started out with, you know, go ahead. And if you can afford it, put 90,000 in and get into one of these cities and just buy as many as you can and start putting them on the secondary market. I, I mean, that's in my opinion, the best way to go about it right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I still would definitely recommend do a little bit of research, um, especially for your first couple properties. Cause again, the new restriction of two per week, which I believe is a hard reset Sunday um, UTC or something. I, I believe it's weekly for everybody. So if you happen yes. to start the game on the weekend, you can sell a couple properties Saturday and Sunday and then sell another on Monday. So you can really sell four within your first couple of days, um, depending on when you start. Uh, I highly recommend if you're not on a Discord, if you're not in a Facebook group, if you're not connected to a community somehow, join a community, find what people need. Because there's a, there's almost always going to be a need for FSA buyers. So see, ask around, because the idea also is maybe you can sell a couple properties very quick and make some additional money. Um, again, want to keep under that 100,000 100, threshold. But I, if, I, if I was starting, that's how I would approach it is go find a couple for sure sales. Because really, as an FSA person, depending on how long you want to stay in that FSA um, notation, you want to have two sales a week minimum. Like if you're not getting two S FSA flips, then like you're not maximizing your opportunity every week uh, because like it's a hard reset. Like there's no rollover, like sell two a week, make sure that you're getting that money um, to build that VPP. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll work on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely, with 
doing your FSAs, you have to get in Discord. I can't imagine playing this game without being in Discord, being in the primary Upland Discord or any of the secondary servers that have been created around the Upland game. Yeah, absolutely. Community is key, honestly. Community is absolutely key to being successful in Upland. Yeah, and there's not too much complex about FSA. Um, it's more, and it helps you get to meet some of the players that can help you along. Um, but this video was created just to help maximize your time as an FSA player. Um, anything else you want to touch on with FSA? No, uh, again, you know, if you're watching this video, you're probably newer to Upland. If you're trying to figure out FSA and things like that, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to either uh, Too Stupid or myself on Discord. Um, you can hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we are always available to help, and uh, we love helping new players uh, with their journey. So, again, if uh, yeah, you have any questions, reach out. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. There you go. Where? All right. New lingo. You are getting that lingo. <laughs> very, very impressed. And also, we do host the Upland Property Experts once a week. We record on Thursdays. We live stream it on currently right now, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. And the podcast is launched on all major platforms on the Fridays, Friday at midnight. So if you're enjoying these videos and you want to hear more advanced stuff and keep up to date with what's happening of upland definitely check out the podcast uh that's released on thursday and fridays and we'll be talking to you soon we have a lot more of these videos coming your way and hopefully and leave in the comments videos that you want us to create because we're here to help the community and uh help the game grow and until next week or next video we'll talk to you soon It's the Opix Podcast, baby. Glad you tuned in. Got your host, thank me later, and you're stupid to win. Might become an obsession as soon as you begin. Start out king of the street, then lock it iconic in. Welcome to Offland. Grab your Opix, man. On your way in the door, hit you with four grand. Get to buying and gripping, then to selling and flipping. Over to moving and shocking. I'm Scrooge McDuckin' in Opix.